Okay, so tonight, really why I'm here is we want to come and talk to you about kingdoms in conflict. Do you know that the very soul of Paul Elizabeth is spiraling? It's searching for leadership. We've just had Danny O'Don in the newspaper with a big photograph with smoke and uh, ancestral things that they're busy with. We've just had other political parties holding their main events here because they're searching for the soul of Port Elizabeth. Do you know that even the ambassador from Israel was here for almost two weeks? Everybody's focus of attention and eyes has been to gain leadership in this province, if you like, and in this town and city in particular. So, if I ask you tonight, where's the church in all of this? Do you know that in Parliament we have, with the ACDP, we have every Friday uh, people in there praying in the seats of Parliament, praying in the Holy Ghost, Praying for breakthrough, praying to break down the altars of Baal, break down the altars of the devil, and bring godly governance to our nation. So there's a kingdom in conflict. So tonight you sit here and you've been fed the word of God by this precious couple. You've been fed a godly value system. You've been fed what's right and what's wrong. And now you're faced with the, with, with the situation, where do we go from here? Your pastor was saying, they had to come to some decision of what, what are we, how are we going to take it to the next level? How are we going to reach this community? So I want to share with you tonight, basically, it's such a simple, you know, when you, when you talk about the things of God, they're so simple. They're not complicated. They're quite easy to understand. Somebody at the lowest level can understand it, and somebody at the highest level can understand it. So tonight I want to try and uh, impart to you some understanding of how we can take dominion authority and rule as believers. We've had a, a, a new government in place, but we we perhaps worse off even now than we were before. Things are just going from bad to worse. We have to arrest ourselves and understand where are we going wrong? How do we raise a godly <coughs> kingdom? The Bible says this gospel of the kingdom must be preached. And then the end will come. It didn't say this gospel of salvation. It didn't say this gospel of healing or deliverance. It said this gospel of the kingdom. What does kingdom mean? Kingdom means rulership. So you've got to ask yourself, ek vraag julle vanaan, dis wat ek vraag jou voor die Heere. And, I, and I'm asking God to put His spotlight in your heart and to reveal to you, where did you lead? Who did you lead? Who did you take responsibility for in your life? You see, if I come into your house and I make a fire in the corner, you're going to slap me upside the head and chase me down the street. Because that's your house. <coughs> But Pastor Fritz has a domain. And his domain stretches outside of these four walls of the church. If you, if you put a map up on the front there, and you begin to ask him, what are the borders? The Bible says to expand your borders, expand your territory, and extend your tent pegs. So those borders are not going to stay there. It's not the wall of China. It's a, it's a boundary that's going to expand as you grow, expand as you gain more capacity, as you gain more strength, more spiritual understanding and more spiritual authority, it will start to expand. But everything inside that domain, so for purposes of tonight, let me just take Bethel's door. Do you know that Pastor Jimmy's first church that he pastored was called Bethel? So, there's something significant about Bethel's door because it comes down the family line and it's carried an anointing. Bethel was a special place. 
where you meet God. Can it be that Bethel's door is going to be the place where you meet God? Can it be that the people in this street are going to meet God? Can it be that every person in every little corner, every little house is going to have an encounter with God because it's in Bethel's door? But let me tell you tonight, it struggles to happen in the absence of leadership. Because there are forces that are swirling over your city. They want to rule your city. So how can we practically secure our borders? How can we do that? So let me, let me tell you just a, uh, one of the ways. Pastor James. Any of you know Pastor James? He does a lot of deliverance. He told a story one day. There was a young girl and she went with a friend to a party. All these beautiful people there. It was all lovely. Everybody's happy. It was excited. Nice. Had a lovely party. Went home. The next week they were having the same party. So the lady said to her, to her friend, I can't make it there uh, at the start time, but you go. You've met everybody. It's all okay. It's all safe. You go. I will come in 30 minutes or half an hour or so and come later. So she thinks, well, these are all beautiful people. So she goes. She walks in the door, and the minute she walks in the door, they switch off the lights, they shut the doors, they shut the curtains, they light a candle in the middle, and they put a baby on the table, and they take a knife, and they put a knife through the heart of that baby. And then they put her hand on that knife. And they say, if you ever tell anybody about this, we will say it was you because we have your fingerprints on this knife. The devil had a plan to rob that young girl of her destiny. To rob her of any authority, of any sense of a normal life. How... And what is the devil's strategy to rob you as an individual of God's destiny for Bethel's door? For this group of people, for this suburb? Do you know that every political party has a spiritual root? They, there's three things they say you must not talk about. You, you must not talk about sex, politics and religion. The reason they say you mustn't talk about politics is because they don't want you to, to get involved in politics because the minute the body of Christ realizes that they are destined to rule, then the devil is going to be chased out. So there's a mountain of governance that is looking for rulership. How do we gain authority in the spirit? over that practical mountain and begin to rule. To him who overcomes can rule and reign with me on my throne. You don't get to rule if you didn't overcome something. You have to conquer those enemies that you face in order to rule and reign. So, you're facing this scenario where in order to rule People are trying to keep you out of, out of politics, keep you out of those domains, because they, they say, you're just a church, you can, you can have your opinion, but the Constitution is the ultimate rule of law. And you must just obey the law. But there is a people of God that have this mind, that the Word of God is the supreme right. law. Yes. We, we, we're not promoting disobedience to the governmental rules but we are promoting that the word of God is eternal it will not change it will not lie it will sustain your life it will carry you through everything that you need and it is the ultimate source of our strength and our very life Amen. you and they say in government you, and in society you can't talk about politics it's because they don't want you there because they know the minute the church rises up 
thrones. Come on. Amen. We, we begin to rule and we will control what goes on in our streets. That's right. You see, we have gangsterism going on. Uh, what happened to the prophetic instruction where we rise up and we say to the gang leader, if you will not cease and assist, by 12 o'clock tomorrow you will be dead. This is not a game. Bring your demonic forces. Because every last one of you will bow your knee to the authority of the Spirit of the Living God. Amen. To the Word of God. Amen. And to the Prophet of God. And to the Apostle of God. That stands up in authority and dominion and declares over our streets, you will be safe. Amen. This is a process of understanding. So... Every political party has a spiritual root. Let me just say clearly, we don't vote for, for a president. A certain president was, uh, was voted in as president in PE uh, for one of the parties. And if you vote for that party, you're not voting for him. He's already been voted in as president. You're voting for the policies that that party stands for. That's what you're voting for. So what happens is, the Lord went to David with the prophet, and the prophet said to him, You killed Uriah with a sword. All David did was put a signature on a piece of paper, and sent Uriah to the front lines to be killed. But God came to him and said, You, David, you killed him with a sword with your own hand. So when you put a cross next to a political party. Many people say to me, I don't know what they stand for. Well, I think it's time you found out. Because when you put that cross there, if they stand for abortion, I don't know if you know how abortions are done. They take an instrument and they put it inside the womb and they grab a leg and they yank and they pull the leg right off that body. Then they take an arm and they pull it right off the body. Then they take the other arm and they pull it right off the body. Then they take an instrument, they put it around that baby's head and they squash that baby's head into a pulp so that it's small enough to pull out. And then they extract it. And all the while, that baby is trying to get away. It's feeling pain. And when you put your cross next to that policy, the prophet will come to you and say, it's as though you yourself took that instrument in your hand and crushed that baby's very head. This is not a game. We're not playing church tonight. We're talking about kingdom governance. We're talking about kingdoms in conflict. We're talking about rulership. This gospel of the kingdom must be preached. And then the end will come. I want to talk to you tonight as a group of people and say to you, Bethel's door is in your hands. What will you do with it? The very soul of Bethel's door is dependent on what you do. Do you know that whichever political party is in power in South Africa right now is put there by the Christians? Do you know that? Do you know why they put a pastor into a party as their leader? Because they want the Christians to think this is a great idea and then they feed them with those policies that are diabolical and ungodly and will destroy your life. So this is about a kingdom in conflict. This is about a war to strip the body of Christ of its authority. So what happens is this. The Lord gave my wife a prophetic word on how to understand how people can do this. How can you as a born again, blood washed uh, Christian servant of the Lord put a, put a cross next to a party that stands for diabolical things. If you go and look and and begin to research what they stand for, what they do, what, they, what they're about. How can people do that? And the Lord began to show her that the devil can only access your life by legal means. He can't come into your house. I said it. If somebody comes into your house tonight and wants to make a fire on the floor, you will chase them out. It's your house. So how does the devil get in? And how does he disempower a body of believers that has all power, might, dominion, and authority. Jesus said, all authority in heaven and earth is given to me, and I give it to you. That means you here tonight sit with all power, 
all authority in the realm of the Spirit, and you can issue decrees and instructions. The Bible says, I will build my church, and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. The word church there, if you look it up in Webster's Dictionary, it says they issued decrees and commands and instructions. When last did you as a body of believers issue an instruction to the municipality? When last did you issue an instruction to the gangs? When last did you issue an instruction to people that are homeless on the street? The ecclesia, the church, is a group of people that come together and they issue, they hear God and they issue instructions. And those people out there must submit to the authority of the Holy Ghost that's inside of you because that's what spiritual authority is all about. That's what it's all about. So, Pastor Fritz, I want to strengthen you with might in your inner man to rise up as a man of God that you are and speak. And I want, to, I want to say to every one of you, you need to stand behind this man of God. Amen. And when he speaks, they won't see him, but they will see all of you. And you will be determined, and you will be specific, and you will know what it is that you want, know where it is that you're going, know what you're hoping to achieve, and you will achieve it by God's grace. You will stand strong. Amen. And in six months' time, you take a photograph around these streets, and you see the beautiful green grass growing on the pavement. And the mowed lawns. And people taking responsibility for their, for their yard. And people taking responsibility for their children. And marriage becoming strong in the community again. Alcohol being chased down the street. Are you a group of people that can rise up and say yes? We will acknowledge our Genesis 1 instruction to rule and reign, take authority in our domain, and stand strong for the kingdom of God. So, there's a booklet that's a compilation of the top 40 prophecies that speaks of revival across the southern tip of Africa. And they say that Revival will break out from there, across the continent of Africa, and then spread out to the rest of the world. Do you know that that prophecy has been coming now for 108 years? Will you be the generation that will say, we will not let another year go by? We want God to move and intervene in our Bethel's door. What's the other town you, are you branching out to? Boyce and Spark. Bethelsdorp and Boysens Park, your days are numbered. Yes. I said your days are numbered. Amen. This body of believers will rise up. Amen. And there ain't no devil in hell that will say a thing about it. Yes. So that revival must happen, but there must be a model. How do we export this model to Africa? What does this model look like? So, what, I'm, what I really want to talk to you tonight about is, in terms of kingdom governance, we in South Africa, we're so blessed that we have a party called the ACDP that have stood for 20 years, they have not wavered on the word of God. When Nelson Mandela was having his final session in Parliament, President Kenneth Meshwe looked across him and he said, uh, President Mandela, the great man that you are, you cannot go to the wrong place. But there's only one way to get to that place. And you will have time now. I pray that you will take that time to find the way to get there. Because the only way to get there is through Jesus Christ. In Parliament. On record. The only way to, Jesus, to, to get to heaven is through Jesus Christ. He could have made lots of money if he was willing to compromise. Because if he just said, okay, it's okay, you can be gay. doesn't matter what the Bible says. You can do what you like. It's freedom for everybody. It's not freedom for everybody. Because when you participate in that stuff, it brings death. And you cannot 
tolerate that death in your domain. You have to push it out of your domain. So that doesn't mean we hate homosexuals. We love homosexuals. We hate their sin. We welcome them in. But we don't tolerate their agenda. We look at what is the policy, what does it stand for, and then we say, does it align itself with the Word of God? What is the Word of God for Boyson? Is it Boyson's? Boyson's Park. Park and Bethel's door. What is the prophetic instruction of the Lord for this city? I want to tell you, this city is about to have an encounter with God. Amen. Amen. I declare an encounter with God. Amen. But if you go into Parliament, and you walk, you, you first you have to sign in and you have to have your ID book and your police searches and all this stuff. And then you go in and then you get to the nice, beautiful big gate. And you know what's behind the gate? A Freemason Lodge. Freemason is a demonic, demonic thing. Right in the center of our parliament. We've just had prophets now praying. At Nkantla in the forest. Did you know right next to Nkantla there's a forest? Did you know that they conduct rituals in that forest? We've just had intercessors praying right in that very same forest. At the very same time, we've had intercessors in Rwanda. <coughs> you know that Rwanda is the heart of Africa. It's where the heartbeat of Africa pumps from. Do you know that Rwanda has had genocide? Do you know how it started? They used to call each other cockroaches. You know that in the South African Parliament, just now, we've had people calling each other cockroaches? Do you know that on the State of the Nation address, if it was not for the word of the Lord to President Kenneth Meshwe, we would have had terrible trouble. But the Lord spoke to him ten minutes before the second day and said, go and see the speaker. And he went to see her ten minutes before she allowed him in because he's, he's uh, got a very strong reputation, he's a good man. And he said to her, you, you called the EFF guy a cockroach. You need to apologize. She said, well, because they were planning what to do to the EFF, and EFF were planning what to do to them. And this would have all happened in the state of the nation. It would have ended in bloodshed. And then they agreed she would not go into parliament. And when they walked into parliament, they stood up. The first thing they stood up, the EFF stood up and said, they call us a cockroach and said, sorry, she's not here, but we'll pass the message on. And that was that. What could he say? She's not there. The same day she apologized to him. Do you know what he did? He apologized to Helen Zill. Because he also called her derogatory names. So when you release the prophetic, you disempower the devil. You strip him of his authority. Mm -hmm. And not only that, you begin to release forgiveness in the next and the next and the next. And you open up a godly environment. Mm -hmm. And in Bethel's door, the environment, when the prophetic instruction comes, the environment will change. And this whole place will be like paradise. Mm -hmm. Six months you must take photographs. Paradise. So the plan to disempower the body of Christ is this. When you put your cross next to a political party that has diabolical policies, and I call them diabolical, I'm not anti-anybody, I'm just saying if you look at the policy and you line it up with the Word of God, does it line up, yes or no? It's a simple question. It doesn't carry history of where you come from, who, who mistreated you, who did. It doesn't come from that perspective. It's a simple question. Does it line up with the Word of God, yes or no? If it doesn't, the minute you put your cross there, Whoever they, even if they're the nicest people in the world, they can be the most beautiful people in the world. But you put your cross there now, you've given the devil legal right to access your life. You can stand up here, and somebody comes with a, it's got a, a gay demon and says, I need deliverance, and you put your hand on their head, and they just look at you and say, the devil says to you, you, you. You remember that cross? You gave away your authority. You've got no say here. And he will chase you out. Because you don't have authority. So... What happens is you, you find people and you wonder, how does it be that they all of a sudden they've got a liberal spirit? Everything is okay. Nothing matters anymore. It's just, it's just liberal. 
because they given an open a door that's legally disempowered the body of Christ of authority. So when we come up into the community and we speak, if our authority is stripped, it's like empty words on empty heads. And there's no condemnation in Christ. So the easiest way and the quickest way, if you've done the wrong thing, is to repent. Say, Father, I'm sorry. I know I voted for that party because history and because I was, you know, apartheid is a horrible thing. And people still have, they still struggle with that. I understand that. So I'm not trying to minimize that. I'm not trying to minimize what people have been through. I'm not trying to minimize uh, the, how they got to where they are now. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to set you free. Amen. So that you can thrive and shine and, and live. And the glory of God can rise upon you like never before. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Okay, so this is, this is how we can practically do something. Would you, would you like me to share with you how we can practically do something? Yeah. For Bethel's law to be revived? Yeah. <coughs> the ACDP is a, polit is a party that has proven themselves over 20 years to not compromise the word of God. So what we do is this. It's, it's as simple as 15 to 20 people signing a membership form for the ACDP and saying, we're going to back this crowd because of the godly stand that they make. Because of the biblical values. So our president, Kenneth Meshwe, is a wonderful man of God. But we don't vote for him. We vote for the policy. We vote for the value. We vote for the integrity of the word. That's what we're putting our life into. Because that's the thing that will live forever. That's the thing that will sustain. Men will fail us. But the word of God will remain forever. That's the thing that we back. So tonight, um, we have in, in Bethelsdorp, did you know in Bethelsdorp we have a groot boom? Het jy dit geweet? Hey bro? Het jy geweet? In Bethelsdorp we got a groot boom. So, what I've done is I've asked Lance Grootboom. <laughs> to step up to the plate. Pastor Fritz has spiritual authority. Can we agree? Yes. Pastor Fritz has a domain that he's responsible for. Can we agree? Yes. Now, God's going to call him... And he's going to stand before the Lord and the Lord's going to say to you, in your domain, what happened there? What did they do in the streets? Who was hungry? Did you feed them? All of these things. So Pastor Fritz is going to say, okay, there's different mountains that we need to have leadership authority in to speak to these issues. So the one mountain is governance. So when it comes to governance, we call on Lance Grootboom and we put him up there and we say, Lance... Will you lead us and we will rally behind you and we will get others to rally behind us and together we rally <coughs> and we, 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 we sign a membership form which costs us only 10 rand a year. Now we become part of the ACDP. We have Lance is leading us. And now from this week we start to identify what are the problems in our town? Who's hungry? Who's a gangster? Who's dealing drugs in my street? And from a governance point of view, we start to speak to these issues. And we start to take back our city. Yes. One suburb at a time. And when you stand before God, He's going to want to know, what did you do with your suburb? He's not going to ask you, what did you do in Parliament? Because that's not your domain. But what is your domain? What is your house? You need to put a map up there and show the borders. Inside this, if a gangster comes across that border, the Holy Ghost will arrest him. Because it's in your domain. 
So we take loans, we get 20 people, pay your membership fee. Now we've got a branch of the ACDP. And now we talk the truth. You know, so many people in politics tell lies. They make up stories because they want to, they want to, it's all about money and it's all, it's got about other different agendas. But tonight we are not talking about agendas. For us, it's not even about a political party, really. It's about kingdom governance. Amen. Amen. It's about the body of Christ rising to its full potential, to its full dimension, and ruling in every mountain, in every sphere. You need to, uh, Lance, if you go to the, to the to police station, find out how do you join up with the police forum, the community policing forum. Do you know that the community policing forum has money? So you join up, uh, either you yourself or you get somebody that's a, a good person that can go in there, join up. They're now in communication with the community policing forum, which is working with the police. They will even give you money to speak to these issues. Then you go to the schools. You say, who's the principal here? Mr. Principal, we have spiritual authority here. We've come to pray. We've come to break the demonic forces over the school. And we want to see this school. And this is, the, this is how we rule this school. In the spirit. And then we go into every aspect of society. There's nothing in your community that you do not rule over. Nothing. God made every one of us to be kings and priests. What is a king if he cannot rule? What is a king if he has no domain to rule? If he has no kingdom to rule? God placed us here to rule. And the way to do it is to rise up strong. And to speak in the spirit to every aspect of your society. In your domain. And as the Lord allows you to grow. You speak to the next level. And you speak to the next level. Now I don't know if you know this. But Pastor Jimmy has 17 branch churches in the metro. Fort Elizabeth metro. Can you imagine if all 17 have a Lance Wall uh, and have a team and they speak to every aspect of society in their domain come on can you begin to see the picture yeah. we will rule the whole city do you know that we start out tonight with 20 or 30 people that will, that will participate but before you know it when they realize how much you love them and how sincere you are to helping them you have 30,000 votes and you will rule this and the council will pay you a salary to rule that's how it works and it's as simple as Lance Trotworm standing up and stepping up to the plate and saying you know what the branch Bethel's door we rule yes. under the hand of almighty God <coughs> Pastor Fritz tonight has put his hand up and said, we will do this thing. <coughs> My question to you tonight is, will you be the people of God that will unashamedly stand upon the truth and shake the suburb for Jesus? I'm coming back. I'm not leaving you isolated. I'm coming back because I'm setting up branches all over between Cape Town and Port Elizabeth as a starting point. And then Lance will speak to the guy down the street and the next guy and the next guy and together then we start to put some weight to it and where there's issues we, we call for President Meshwe to speak Councillor Sherilyn Dudley she's not a councillor she's a what she's a, she's a member of parliament MB Sherilyn Dudley is responsible for this area I believe eh? she's here next week for four days she's here next week uh, you can invite her again. Member of Parliament, right here in Bethel's door. Speaking to your issues. Are you ready to speak to your issues? It's a simple yes or no. And your whole life will never again be the same in Jesus' name. 
So what I'm going to ask you to do tonight, I'm going to ask you, we've got our dear friend Michelle here. She's got forms. If you feel like you want to do this thing, and you want to see this, that we can have no longer a kingdom in conflict, but we can have a kingdom ruled and conquered and have a domain that's under the authority of the Holy Ghost, led by the Father Himself. This is your opportunity. So we're going to pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you that this church will never be the same again. This suburb will never be the same again. And this city will never ever be the same again. In the mighty name of Jesus, I declare with apostolic authority tonight that you will move upon this town, upon this people, at this time, for your glory, in Jesus' name. So practically, that's what we're going to do. We're going to do it right now. We're going to sign up this morning.